welcome back to another week of Kidopolis with Miss Jessie. I'm Miss Jessie. This is Kidopolis for now. Um, we are in the month of August. We are doing a series called Indescribable in which we talk about how your creator, my creator, our creator has no limits. There is no limits to what your creator, God, can do. Um, and we're also focusing on um, creativity and what it means to us and our walk with God. Imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. We're told in scripture that we are made in God's image and because of that we have creativity just like he does. We have pretty much unlimited creativity Maybe not as far as God's go, God's creativity go. It's a tongue twister, apparently. Um, but really, we, we can reach pretty far. This week, we are talking about how God created you to work with others. That is so true, even when things are a little different. And I think... So I'm thinking about this, and Miss Jessie kept laughing. I was laughing so hard. Jacob was in the other room, and he's like, what are you laughing about? And I told him about this lesson and about how this lesson is about working closely with the others. And um, you'll find out in our Bible story about how it's about crowds. And I'm like, that's just not the name of the game right now. We are in a very weird time where we have to be six feet away from each other. We're doing kidopolis over... Um, your phone or your computer, or your TV, it's a little different, but that doesn't, all those things, sure, I can't be right in your face, loud and in, in person, but you know what? There's still so many opportunities that we have to work together. We just have to exercise some creativity, right? So we have to realize that we do have the capability to work with others. God created us to work with others. And we know that that creativity was <laughs> there for him to have us work with others, but we might have to exercise some of our own creativity and figure out ways to do that in a time where, you know, it might not be the best to see each other in person as sad as it is. We're trying to be safe, right? And we're trying to listen to what the doctors and people um, who study virus and stuff tell us to do. So that's why we don't get to see each other in person, but we still need to connect and work with each other so that we can fulfill God's image of ourselves and fulfill his word, right? So that's why Miss Jessie is here for you, hopefully every week. I know there's been a couple weeks, but hopefully you've been seeing me. I've been thinking about you every day, I promise. Um, but we just got to be creative, right? Okay. So if you're going to give me, if you give me a couple minutes to set up for um, a little demonstration that I have, I had to get creative with our activity for this week, but maybe you'll like it. So I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. So I taped off this square right here on my table. Um, if we were in person and things were, you know, regular times, I would have taped this off in our Kidopolis room and I would have shown you. Um, like it would probably have been about the size of maybe your bedroom, maybe your kitchen. I'm not sure. Let's say this is a pretend. Use your creative mind to pretend that this is a 10 foot by 10 foot area. Okay. So nowadays, um, in this weird funky time that we're in 10 by 10 foot area, I got some helpers with me today. Maybe two of them can go like this cause we need to be six feet apart. So let's say that this is a five foot tall Barbie. It's about, I know, we're, we're mixing up a lot of the sizes. Okay, so we have these two Barbies here and this is about as close as they can be together, right? But normally, I'm just gonna have them lay down. Normally, I don't know, a 10 by 10 foot area, we'll say, doo -doo -doo -doo. Her hair is messy, but I like this skirt. That is a cute skirt. Yeah, okay. We can maybe have like, yeah, four, 
maybe five people. These Barbies don't sit, which is kind of unfortunate, but that's okay. Maybe that many people would be like somewhat comfortable, right? But in our story today that we're talking about, this is in the book of Mark and it's chapter two, the first 12 verses, okay? We're talking about Jesus. He entered Capernaum and the people heard that he had come. So many gathered that there was no room left, not even outside the door. So there's not even room, like let's say that there is a crowd outside the door too. We have this crowd here, crowd in this room. Let's just pretend that they're all, just got our hair tangled, standing up, hanging out. And here's Jesus, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them, to all of them, right? That's what he does. He preaches a lot about the word and about his father and um, what it means to live a godly life. Okay. Some men came bringing to him a paralytic, somebody who could not walk, carried by four of them. Since they could not get to him, to Jesus, because of the crowd, let's see, but these are the people, Okay. They're like, oh no, we can't get in. We can't get in. It's too crowded. And they really want to hear what Jesus has to say. They know that he is working miracles. They know that he, what he is saying is like amazing and it feels good in their heart. And they want to be there. And then their friend who is paralyzed, you know what paralyzed means? He probably can't walk. He, he can't walk. Um, who knows how long it's been? Maybe a while. But he can't walk. And he definitely can't fight his way through the crowd. And not only does he want to hear what Jesus has to say, but maybe he's probably hoping that Jesus is going to heal him. So they made, and I don't have a way to show you this other than they made an opening through the roof. Through the roof. So these guys, remember, their friend could not walk. So could he climb a building and get to the roof? No, they probably had to somehow carry him up. I would really love to figure out how they did that. Um, I picture maybe they had like some kind of like mat or board or something and they tied a rope to it and they like heaved ho him up there. Who knows? Maybe they like did like a tower. Maybe they threw him up there. Maybe they do some cheerleading skills. I don't know. Okay, but the point is they went to the roof above Jesus and they dug through it. They dug through the roof. And they lowered the mat, so maybe that's where it comes into play. The paralyzed man was laying on. Let's say this is the paralyzed man. Okay? They lowered it to Jesus. And he's in the middle of all these people. He's like, what? <laughs> Can you imagine your face if somebody came through the roof? And Jesus, actually, he didn't say what. He said, son. Your sins are forgiven. Awesome. His sins are forgiven because you know that I sin, you sin, we sin all the time. As Try as we might to live like Jesus, there are always sins getting in the way. But Jesus heals them. He healed them or forgave, forgives them. He forgives them for that man. He forgives them for you and me. And he told that man that day, your sins are forgiven. Now, some of the teachers of the law were sitting there. That was some of these people who were sitting in this crowd. And they were like, uh, who, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? They're like, they're talking about Jesus right now. They're like, he does not have the right to do that. He is not God. Why are they even sitting there? I don't know. Okay, so they said that. And then Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what he was thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven or get up, take your mat and walk. But that you may know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, okay, get up, take your mat, go home. And the guy was like, oh, okay. So, there's a couple points in this story. First of all, we get another preview of people who didn't really like God, or didn't really like Jesus. They loved God, and they thought because Jesus was like, your sins are forgiven. They're like, 
he clearly doesn't love God because if he loved God, he wouldn't pretend that he had the ability to do that. Um, and Jesus's response was, why, why did you come here? Would you have rather just seen me heal somebody and heal their body, but not their spirit, basically? He told them because he could, he did both. But, and the other thing is that this man, just a woman for now, but this woman was like, she would not have been able to be healed if it weren't for her friends. I forget which one her friends are. It's a mess over here. If her friends did not pull them up onto the roof and lower her slash him down to see Jesus. Teamwork, right? It makes the dream work because, where did my little paper go? God created you to work with others. And he created those, that guy's friends, to work with him to get him to see Jesus. And all of those people who were there to see Jesus, I mean, you don't know their stories. You don't know what work they did to get there. But think about how memorable this story is. Because this guy could not just be like wheeled in or rolled in or dragged in because of the huge crowd. He had to go in through the roof. Okay? And let's think about if there wasn't a conversation between the, what does it say that they're just religious leaders, teachers of the law, if they weren't there to talk to God about, or Jesus about uh, their feelings about who he was. Let's think about just all the different things, all the way that these different parts of the story work together because there are a bunch of people in a room. Now, I'm not saying that right now is the time or the place for us all to gather into a big room like that. But I want you to think of this room as um, kind of like a virtual room. We can have a virtual room where we meet together and we can also have like um, a spirit room, we'll call it, in our hearts. Because I don't want you to forget about your friends and your family and stuff who you're not in a room with every single day or even every single week. I want you to think about them still and keep them in your hearts, even if you can't be by them, okay? So I know right now we're kind of like this one with the cute dress, hanging out all by herself. Maybe we have a couple family members, right? But in our hearts, I want you to think about this and being like this. And I want you to think about how we can all work together so that we can make these miracles that this guy, that Jesus does happen. Okay? Does that make sense? I hope it does. Also, I know that Jesus isn't a Barbie. This is just for illustrative purposes. This is just pretend, right? Okay. So, you are probably going to go watch the so-and-so show right now. And they are probably going to do a much better job of illustrating this than I did. So, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed my little demonstration. And I'll see you back here in a couple of minutes. Uh, that's, uh, I don't know, the Taj Mahal. Basketball. No? Okay. Corn cake. Mad cow disease. Is it a, a rubber band? And I don't know, Pablo Picasso. Is that, I'm trying. An old Irish cottage. A haunted house. Uh, 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 baby fish mouth. Baby. A hissy fit. Fine. I don't know. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We're out of time. You were so close. Really? Yes. What was the word? Indescribable. Who oh, no, knows? Waffle iron. <laughs> I was way off. <laughs> oh, but good guesses. Uh, all right. Next word. Because that's just not the way we do things around here. But it would be so fun. Why no, not? I mean, we can't bring 20 baby goats they into your basement. They would be so cute. That's not a reason to bring baby goats in your basement. Why can't you be more fun? Why can't you be more serious? Fun. Serious. Fun. Serious. Oh, hey. Hey, my name is Brandon. And I'm John. This is the So-and-So Show, where we like to have fun yeah. while talking about things that are often quite serious. Yeah.
I'm sorry, John. I really, I really shouldn't ask you to change. You are you. I am me. I know you're this right, Brandon. It's it, it's our differences that have made this friendship work as long as it has. Yeah, yeah. Hey, do you remember when we first met? Are you kidding me? Of course I do. It was like it's almost like it was yesterday. Hey. Hey. I like that shirt. Thanks. John, that was yesterday. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. When we first met. Right, yeah. Right, right. I remember it like it was 25 years ago. <sighs> Sup? up hey that outfit's all that in a bag of chips thanks home skillet your memory is very bad that's what? that's not how we met at all plus we were way younger 25 years ago ah oh, right yeah I remember it like it was no uh, what Stop. Let me, let me do it. Okay. Hey. Hey. Oh, yeah! It, it's all coming back to yeah, me. Yeah, just a couple of creative kids, our whole future ahead of us. Uh -huh. hey, what would you want your younger self to know if you could talk to him today? Don't be afraid of mayonnaise. It's delicious. That's not true, first of all. Mayonnaise is gross. It is. It's and second, wouldn't it be neat if we could go back in time and talk to our younger selves? I've got a better idea. This always goes well. Please welcome someone who knows stuff. Whoa. What's going on? I don't know. Clearly, we've traveled 25 years into the future from the moment we met until now. These old people, they're future versions of ourselves. It's really obvious. Come have a seat, young yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, here you go. <laughs> All right. You're taking this well. Just your standard time travel episode. Uh -huh. Didn't you ever watch Quantum Leap? Yeah. Oh, of course you have. You're me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, now, we obviously know who you are, uh, but what do you know? Oh, I'm really good at math and writing. Uh, oh, and I'm also really good at making sounds with my mouth. Oh. I totally forgot we could do that! <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about you, me? What, what do you know? I know that I can't stay here very long. My father wants me home before lunchtime. Oh. Are you serious? You just traveled through time. Take a minute, man. Make some mouth noises. <laughs> Is this really who I'm going to be spending all my time with in the future? It's not that bad. Whatever, dude. You're way too dull for me. There's no way we're going to be friends. Oh. This is our future. Do you still not get it, genius? Oh, see? He called you a genius. I was being sarcastic. Simpleton. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. I think that sounded like an insult, Mr. Boring McBoring Pants. Don't attack him. That's me. What are you, his dad? Yeah, what are you, my dad? You guys are so mature. Can I go home now? Yeah, go, and I hope I never see you again. Yeah. You will see me again. This is our future. What are you talking about? Can we please just stop? None of this is actually possible. Oh, there he goes again, taking away all our fun. This is serious. Fun. fun. Serious. Fun. fun. Serious. Fun. Serious. Fun. Serious. Fun. serious. It's, it's Bible, Bible story, story time, time with, with Kellen. Kellen. What is up, guys? Whoa. Am I seeing double? Hey, Kellen. Hey, Kellen. What's up, Kellen? 
Sir? What exactly is going on here? A time travel episode. Ah, gotcha. What story are we doing today? It's a story about some friends who had to get creative to help another friend. Want to help me out? Sure. Sure. Awesome. Our story today begins with a group of friends. We don't know their names, so let's just call them Egon, Winston, Peter, and Ray. The friends wanted to help Ray because he couldn't walk. They had heard stories of how Jesus had miraculously healed a lot of people. So when they heard Jesus was in town, they decided to carry Ray to the house where Jesus was staying. I don't know. It doesn't look good. The line to see Jesus is all the way around the block. We won't get to see him until next Tuesday. We've got to come up with a way to get Ray in to see Jesus. Think. So they thought. Hmm. 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 <gasps> I've got it. We'll throw him. What? No. All right. All right. I'll supervise. All right. Okay. On three. One, two, two, three! There he oh, goes! Oh, goes. Oh, there you go! Oh, you got this! Keep oh, on! Oh, yep, 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 oh, yep, yep, right in my ear. Oh, yep, oh, yep, you, you got this. Oh, I'll, I'll, I got your blanket. Oh, Bring it over. Oh, that's not good. Here he comes, he's coming oh, back! Oh, ah. Careful there! Don't oh, <laughs> make it! Oh, you got this! Keep on going! Yep, yep, yep. Oh, wow. oh, oh, here you go. Oh, Get that oh. over you. Whew. Huh. That didn't work. Of course it didn't work. Okay, that looked really fun. But they didn't really throw their friend against the wall. What they did do was very creative. They made a hole in the roof of the house where Jesus was. And they lowered Ray's mat down to see Jesus. Whoa! Oh! Whoa! Oh! Whoa! Oh! 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 Hi, Jesus. Hi, Hi Jesus. Jesus. Son, your sins are forgiven. What? He can't say that. We, only God can forgive sins. You with me, guys? Guys. Ugh. You with me? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why are you thinking these things? Is it easier to say, your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up, take up your mat, and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. I tell you, get up, take up your mat, and go home. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, Jesus did a miracle in front of all those people. Probably didn't give the guy the ability to fly like that, but it was still miraculous. And it all began because a group of friends came up with a creative way to help their friends see Jesus. The end. That was great, Kellen. It's great to see friends working together to help each other out. Mm -hmm. Totally. We all need people in our lives who can be there when we need them. Plus, we need to be people who are there when others need us. Just like Brandon is there for me. And John is there for me. But we're so different. Yeah, but that's what makes the relationship work, right? You're like the serious one, so it helps keep the show from going off the rails. Oh, and you probably help us loosen up and have fun in a way that makes us more creative and makes the show more interesting. And, uh, and Kellen's the glue that holds it all together. Did you hear that, Kellen? You're the glue. Oh, thanks, guys. And it's an honor working together with you to help others see Jesus. Thanks for the story, Kellen. See you next time. Bye. That was fun. Seriously. Hey, you want to go do a, a show together? Yeah, 
I'd love to. <laughs> we'll work on that. Good luck. Reveal the question. Oh, yeah. How can working with others make you more creative? Maybe different people have ideas that would never occur to you. Or they know some games that you've never played. Or experiments you've never considered. Or mouth noises you've never tried. <laughs> and so it begins. We'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. Uh, triangle. House. Uh, uh, up, up, up. up. Pointing uh, north. So-and-so north. So show. Arrow. Uh, arrow. North. Um, Apple pie. Sun. Cherry pie. Peach uh, pie. Peach pie. 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 Cherry uh, pie. Strawberry pie. Uh, Tomato pie. All right. All right. Uh, uh, Brandon. 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 Uh, uh, foot. foot. All right. That's foot. Uh, I give up. Uh, toothless. Snaggletooth. Toothless. Uh, toothless. One tooth. Toothless alligator. Yes! Oh! oh! Toothless alligator. What? Yes. All right, who gets to draw next? All right, I get My to turn. draw next because no. I'm so uh, good. <laughs> <laughs>
and you'll have all four lines. Okay, so JV, Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. Psalm 145, verse 3. Now, our versity, if those two verses are easy peasy for you and you know that you can do better, you know if you can, you know it, we're going to do all four. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Psalm 145, verse 3. And again, this is in the NIRV. That's the New International Revised Version. That's what these words are from. Um, if you have, for example, my Bible is NIV. But there are a lot of different versions of the Bible that might have a little bit different, um, a little bit different words. Okay, the wording might be slightly different. Um, for example, mine says, "Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom." So it means the same thing, they're just a little different. So it might be interesting too, if you're, if you're an older kid and you're, you're really solid with your memory verse, maybe go look at um, this verse, Psalm 145 verse three in a different version, different Bible version and see what it has to say. Sometimes when I'm doing my Bible study, um, I will read a verse and I'm like, oh my gosh, what on earth does that mean? I'm a little bit confused or a lot of bit confused. So sometimes I will go, usually on my computer, because that's the easiest way, and I'll look up the verse in a different, in a different translation. Um, and that helps. There's a lot of different translations out there because we want everybody to understand the Bible in the best way possible. So go ahead and flip back and forth. That's just a little bit of a, a little side note from Miss Jessie. I hope that helps you, um, not only with this memory verse, but with your other Bible studies. So again, let me know about your uh, memory verses. I love to bring treats to people. It makes my month. It is like the best thing ever when I get to bring a treat to somebody. So please bless me with your memory verse, please. Okay, next is our prayer time, which is so very important. Um, we had a little buddy last week for our prayer time. I'm gonna see if she wants to help out again this week. Give me one minute to find her. Okay, everybody, I have my little prayer buddy here. What's your name? So, Heidi Jo. This is Heidi Jo, if you remember. I can't remember if it was last week or the week before, actually. But here, I'm going to have her do the memory verse just because she's right here. Um, she probably isn't going to memorize it. Because how old are you, Heidi? Three. She's three, so she's like junior, junior university. But she can repeat after me. And maybe if you have a little brother or sister or cousin, somebody in your home that you can... Um, read the memory verse to or have them repeat after that is a great way for you to practice it and it's a great way to, for you to help to work with others such as God created you to work with others in your life um, to help your whole family and get to know God better okay so Heidi will you repeat after me yeah okay say Lord you are great Lord and you great awesome. you are really worthy of praise Really praise. Awesome. No one. No one. Can completely understand. Sam. Pretty one can't stand. How great you are. Great you are. Psalm 145. 45. Verse 3. Verse 3. Awesome job. Give me five. Thank you for working with me. I like teaching you. All right, you want to pray? Yeah. Do you have any prayer requests? Yeah. Okay, what do you want to pray about? So, H-D-R. Six. Six. And five. Okay, perfect. All right, so you pray for like a minute and then I'll pray, okay? Okay. All right, go ahead. Dear God. Oh, that was awesome. Dear God. Dear God. To watch. To watch TV and eating dinner. And. 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 
chicken. And those that salad. <coughs> Are you thanking God for our, for our food? Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't come, Daddy. Oh, yeah, Daddy was not there. Okay, my turn to pray? Yeah. Okay. Mm, thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for my Heidi Jo. Thank you for um, her being an awesome prayer partner. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be creative, to figure out more ways to connect with my um, church friends and the church kiddos. Thank you so much for giving me a good team to do that. Um, Lord, I thank you for every provision you've given in me, given me in my life. I thank you for our food. I thank Mommy, you for our home. Mommy, you don't have a friend. I don't have a friend. Yeah, we just have a friend. Okay. Can I finish praying? Sure. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much for laughter, and thank you so much for joy. Um, we love you, Lord. We pray this all in your son's name. Amen. Watching you do have a friend. Actually, I do have my friend. All right. So can we <laughs> can we say bye to our, our friends on Daddy's phone? Can you say bye, friends? Bye, friends. See you later. Can I please play with these Barbies? But they're my friends. But they're my friends.